everyone would publish his negative results now. You would have a massive amount of data which has to be somewhere, somehow um, uh, reviewed. Oops, there, there has to be a review process, right? Not everyone can. You, you, of course, you can uh, everything. Pub, you can publish everything, but somehow you, you know you need someone who says, "Yeah, that's that's not really correct. You missed this and this, or that's interesting publication. I want to add this and this." I think the key to building a new, or to an additional publication um, would be a large community who, you know. So the idea is maybe where you have somehow a community review where scientists can add comments to a, a paper or to negative data which then helps again the person who worked on that either correct what he published or what he wrote in his blog or um, to change it um, or to defend himself to say hey no I did it because X and Y. I think the key to that what you're saying is you need if everyone would publish it, it would be a huge amount of published data and it has to be somehow reviewed and it has to be reviewed somehow from a large, you know, from, from a lot of people and I think the key to that would be the community. So it would be a different approach which we were going than the traditional publication system where you have your two or three reviewers, your, your editor and then people go through the publication, gives their comments, would send back, etc. Um, the first question was... Sorry? Okay. No. We, we, I think, yeah, at the moment we're not doing it. And also, the, the way how we, I don't know, maybe the publication houses will change what they, you know, Nature had, I think Nature Proceedings now, so they, of course, they're thinking about similar things and they're going to the same same direction. May we become competitor in the future, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word competitor. I think everyone tries to achieve the same thing um, and um, we just, everyone wants to change something in the space. Uh, it's just coming from different angles. I'm not sure. Maybe it can be competition at one point or maybe not. Maybe it would help if we hand over the question to someone who is, I think thought about whether they make competition for themselves. And Nature Publishing is one of the publishing houses, um, of course. I think you've thought about that before you uh, launched Nature Network, I suppose. Um, do you see Nature Network as a competition to Nature Publishing, to Nature Magazine, to the journal? Lou? Hi, can you hear me? We do, yes. Yeah, that's um, no, not at all. Um, so Nature Network is very much complimentary. It's, it's actually um, mainly being used by scientists as a way of talking to other scientists in a non-publication-based forum. So that can be topics not just about um, data and the research that they're carrying out in their lab, which obviously might be sensitive and talks about people being worried about being scooped and so on. But it can also be issues that concern scientists, things such as funding, things such as applying for grants. Um, one of the things that we saw on Nature Network last year, for example, is um, that there were threatened um, cuts in science funding by the government. And a couple of um, former Nature Network bloggers formed the Sciences Vital campaign. And social media, including their blogs on, so on Nature Network, were very important in terms of mobilizing both opinion and action among other scientists online and among members of the general public. And this is obviously something that Nature, as a publication where um, we're focused mainly on getting research data out there couldn't itself focus on. Okay. Um, I, so I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave very shortly, but uh, uh, from our perspective, we're building tools which help researchers with their workflow, so we're not intersecting really with the publishing space. So we don't really see ourselves in, in competition with the publishing space. Um, but I think one of the, the big interesting business model questions that's coming up is where does open access fit, fit in? Uh, because the publishing industry and publishing model has traditionally been about taking on the risks of distribution and getting the reward of, of being able to charge access to journal content as a result of taking on those risks. And uh, I, I think that uh, broadly... 
the way open access has been moving is to go for an author pays model. And, and for most publishers, generally, they come out even in terms of their business models, whether or not they're, they're going down an open access route or a closed access route. So uh, my feeling is that business models are quite robust and quite flexible. Uh, uh, and, and that we can find a way to, to have more open systems while still retaining the good things about the systems that, that already exist. Whether, whether robust or flexible, Ian, um, still you're talking about business models and uh, Mendeley and ResearchGate and Thomson and others are um, companies still, commercial companies. If I, might, if I may challenge you uh, on that for a, for a second before you leave us. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry, I've got oh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's try. Um, I, I just wanted to ask. Maybe it's it's less about what is technological technologically possible, and from the business side, um, luc luc lucrative, whatever that is in English, um, but rather, um, what is good for science? What is good for for good science? What improves the scientific process? I get this process. We would say in German. Oh, uh, sorry, well, sorry for that question, but um, you know. You don't want to leave me with a simple question there. <laughs> um, well, uh, okay. Uh, I'll answer your rather philosophical question with rather a philosophical answer. The science and the scientific methods and how we understand the world is about taking a rational approach to the world, and and we have to try things. We have to experiment with different ways of doing things. Uh, the market allows a good way of comparing your idea with reality. Because if you come up with something that contributes value to the market, you should be rewarded. What Tim O'Reilly has said about internet startups is that if you can find a way to produce more value within an ecosystem than your company or your service consumes, then you can thrive, you can produce innovation, and you can produce uh, a business that is viable. And I think what you're seeing with, with the kinds of tools that are emerging now, and the three that are represented today, are just the very tip of a whole host of tools that have, have been started, emerged, developed, iterated on over the last five years. What you're seeing is the beginning of an exploration of the very fundamental processes by which we do science, with the hope that internet scale will give us efficiencies, and the companies that are smart enough to produce good efficiencies will be able to produce you know, uh, viable businesses at the same time. I, I, I guess that's that's kind of how I think about it. So. Yeah, nonetheless, the, the figures I was quoting in the beginning uh, must have been quite interesting to you because scientists are not using it in a wider sense yet. How do so, we how do yeah, we get the message across? So, so, so the tool that we produce at Mentally, you don't need to be on, uh, in an online network for it to give you value. It just it takes the pain away out of, out of citing your, your data. So we, we address it by producing a tool which gives the individual an immediate benefit, and then on the back of many people collaborate, no, many people collectively doing something which gives them benefit, we, we get these kind of network effects. And these benefits are quite practically efficiency, uh, things like that, so um, not philosophical yeah. at all. It's about yeah, exactly. time, time in the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and so, so, uh, on, on that answer, I'm afraid, gentlemen, I, I will have to leave you. But uh, thank you again for the opportunity to par participate. And if there are any questions anybody would like to direct uh, in my direction after this, out of anything that comes up or people think that they might, might want to you know, shoot that direction, a question in my direction, I, I think you could share my contact details with people on this. Will do, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us so far. I hope I hope Lou can uh, stay with us a few more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Cheers to London. Cheers to London. Bye. Bye. Okay. So back to Lou again. Yeah. You? Yeah. Lou, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I wouldn't know. Okay. Here on the panel, on the not virtual, non virtual panel. <laughs> no? Okay. Further questions, please. I'd like to know for all of these platforms or content.
Was als Journalist, for instance? Yeah. Um, so basically, um, no. In the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I the idea was to connect scientists in the beginning um, to each other. I think that um, we have lots of cases within the community where we see that, for example, patients joining ResearchGate, having a question regarding. Um, yes. Um, these people getting reported very fast. And honestly, we have to um, tell the people that's not the right community for you. The danger is really that you're diluting again the purpose of this of this idea of this research, of, of this scientific network again by bringing people in who are not scientists who are interesting interested in science. Uh, but it's definitely a good idea um, to build something up on that, um, not in ResearchGate, but build something connected to ResearchGate in a way where you can connect um, the public. Which, for example, is is interesting. Um, uh, I have uh, my a friend of mine, uh, Professor von der Leyen. He, um, the name says, I think, everything. Um, he is a professor for cardiology, and he works on a he works or well, he's researching in a in a field where he needs um, or he's helping in a specific research project where he needs uh, patients which are, have a very rare disease. Um, and I think networks like that could connect people who are looking for people who want help um, and people who have the disease but you know are not living in Germany or etc. So it's um, I think there are ways to connect um, the public with scientists. It, I think it won't be ResearchGate itself, it will be something up on that um, and to increase on the one hand the public understanding of science and of course um, giving a chance also for journalists to find what's going on, what's what's happening right now. But it has to be somehow up on that because we we experience that um, it you, it's get very broad and then the scientist thinks at one point, okay, it's not the platform which I'm thinking of it should be. So it has to be a, a, an, addi an additional platform somehow connected to this, what we're building. I don't have a solution, but something like this I, I have in mind. Just to that point, you said um, it's not the right community for you, but for non-scientists, why would you say that? Maybe, um, maybe I said it wrong, like from me, but what do you mean not the right? Uh, yeah, like, people could argue that um, if, even if you're not a scientist, um, why wouldn't be allowed just to have like some some readers ah, function and just read all everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, reader function. You don't have to sign up to read everything. You can read everything. Yes, you can read everything. You don't have to sign up to read every discussion, every publication, every conference. Only in case of the person who is typing in the comment says, "I don't want to share that publicly." Um, it's only for ResearchGate members. Then you cannot see it. Then only people within ResearchGate can see it. No, of course they can read. No, sorry. I, uh, I said that wrong. <laughs> 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 